Hi, I'm Ethan Kwan, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a sand simulation, falling sand simulation, in Scratch. Now, I know what you're thinking. Didn't you already make this? And yes, I did. But that project was kind of laggy because it used clones, and clones are really, like, make Scratch really unhappy. So, here, here's the previous project. It's like a basic sand simulation. It's like what, what you would expect of a sand simulation until you add many, many particles and then you might notice it's getting slightly laggy and the more particles you add, the laggier it gets because it's simulating every single one of these particles which is really intensive on Scratch because, you know, Scratch hates clones for some reason. Um, yeah, so what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be remaking this project without any clones. Now, how do we do that? Well, we need to use Pen. Now, Pen has no clone limit, so, because you're not using clones. So, we, clones, uh, sorry, not clones, uh, Pen doesn't use any, like, that much, um, almost, it, it, it basically doesn't use any of the frames per second at all. It doesn't, like, slow down scratch at all. So, that's what we're gonna be using. So, Okay, so we are going to be making a sand simulation, just like this one, but just 100% pen. So, you might have seen my other 100% pen projects before, and you might have seen a video about how 100% uh, my video about how 100% pen projects work. Uh, today we are going to be basically following the same principles. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's start coding. So, we are going to be making a 100% pen project sand simulation in Scratch. Now, I would highly recommend watching my previous video on how to make a Fallen Sand simulation in Scratch, but it is not necessary that you watch that, because I'll try and explain everything, just like I've explained everything in the last video. Okay, so let's let's start coding, okay. So, I have a new Scratch project here, and I've just named it Sand Sim 100% Pen, and yeah, okay, so let's get started with the video. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want a pen sprite. We don't want the scratch cat. I guess you could use a scratch cat, but I don't want to use the scratch cat. I'm going to create a new sprite. I'm going to take the new sprite, and I'm going to call it pen, like that. So I have a new uh, sprite called pen, and this is going to hold all our pen, as you might have guessed. Uh, nothing needs to be in the costume, so let's just go to the code tab and start coding. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is we want a grid of uh, pixels, right? We want to create a grid that is holding all of our pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new list, and I'm going to call this list um, grid. And just click, you just leave it for all sprites, click OK. Okay, so now we have our grid. I'm just going to make this big like this so we can actually see it. Okay, so how is this going to work? Well, um, this is this might sound complicated right now, what we're going to do is we're going to store every single pixel of the screen, or every single block, I guess, every single uh, particle we want to simulate, we're going to simulate everything inside this grid, and then we're going to draw this grid to the screen. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't know. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to be st storing the whole grid into this, uh, we're going to be storing the whole screen into this grid. Okay, so let's get started with that. First of all, we need to create our grid, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag a one green flag clicked, and every single item is only going to have one entry. So for example, one, and one, one, two, right, zero, right? Uh, this is a one-dimensional array. Um, so this is going to store every single pixel on our screen, and we're going to start from the top left, right here, and we're going to move over, and every single block we move over is going to be the next item. So for example, this first item, 1, is going to be storing this uh, item right here. The second item, also 1, is going to be storing the next item. The third item is going to be storing the next item, and so on. So that's how this is going to work. Okay, so first of all, let's create our grid so we can actually modify it. What we're going to do is we are going to create a new block. We're going to call it Setup, um, setup Grid. Uh, run without screen refresh, click OK. Okay, and we're just going to drag our setup grid right underneath our when green flag clicked. Okay, setup grid. What are we going to do in here? Well, first of all, let's delete all of grid. 
So we start with a blank canvas like this. And then what we're going to do is we are going to be looping through every single grid item in this list. Now, we need to know how many that is. So how do we know how many that is? Well, it takes a bit of clever math. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to variables. We're going to delete the my variable. And we're going to create a new variable called grid uh, size. And this grid size is going to be, well, representing the size of our grid. So for all sprites is fine, and click OK. Okay, so grid size, what are we gonna do? We're first gonna create a new block called setup, and run cloud screen refresh. And we're gonna drag our setup underneath our green flag clicked. We're gonna stick this up uh, above our setup grid, but below our red green flag clicked like this. Okay, setup. What are we gonna do in a setup? We're gonna set up all the variables. Actually, I should probably rename this to setup variable setup. Vars, bars, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, set up bars. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set our grid size to, for now, let's just set it to 16. So that means our each each dot or each um, each simulated particle, I guess, is is 16 by 16 pixels. So now we need to figure out how many pixels up and across our our canvases, right? So Based on this grid size, and based on how big we know our screen to be, how many pixels of screen are there going to be? Uh, how many how many dots are there going to be across and down? It doesn't make sense right now, I'll, it will make sense in a second. Uh, we're going to create a new variable, calling it world width. And we can click for all sprites. And another one called world height, also for all sprites. Okay. So we have two new variables, world height and world width. What are we going to do here? Well, inside setup variables, what we're going to do is we're going to set our world width to, and this is going to take a bit of math, so we know that our, um, uh, the top, top right corner here is 200, x 240. You can see that by the little counter I have at the top, which shows my mouse position. Um, that is 240, correct? So... That means in the center of the screen, that's um, center of the screen x is zero, uh, so and then it goes to negative two hundred and forty. So that means the whole grid, the whole width of the screen is four hundred and eighty because that's two hundred and forty plus two hundred and forty or two hundred and forty times two. So that means we're gonna have to divide this by four hundred eighty. So drag it divided by, and stick four hundred and eighty on the left side. And on the right side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick grid size. Now, grid size is 16, so let's stick this inside inside our set world width to. So set world width to 480 divided by grid size. Now, if we click the setup variables, as you can see, world width is set to 30, which I'm pretty sure is accurate uh, because 400. So 16 times 30 should be 480, right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, set world width to 480 by the grid size. Now, let's duplicate that and let's go ahead and set the world height. Now, world height is basically the same thing as world width, but instead of 480, we're going to stick 360 because the whole height of the screen is 360. Okay, so now we have our setup variables. Now, okay, I, I've noticed something. World height is a fractional value, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to operators, grab the abs of block, and change this to floor. And we're going to duplicate this. And we're just going to stick these divisions, both of these divisions, into the floor block. Okay. So now we have set our world width and world height. As you can see, that is set to a, uh, a to, to a integer and not a, hang on, and not a like decimal, right? Anyway, okay. So uh, now we have our setup variables. It sets our world width to be 30, height to 22, and you can change this. Let's say we change this to like 10, and that means each pixel is going to be 10. And if we click the green flag, as you can see, world width is set to 48, world height is set to 36. Okay, let's set this back to 16 for now, just for testing. Okay. And, okay, so now let's set up our grid. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's actually not too hard. We're going to go to control, 
and we're just gonna drag a repeat block and we're gonna repeat world height and inside this world, world repeat world height we're gonna duplicate this and we're gonna stick another repeat loop we're gonna nest this repeat loop is the technical term uh, it we're gonna nest a repeat loop inside a repeat loop and this time we're gonna repeat world width let's zoom in a little bit yeah okay so inside this repeat world width all we're gonna do is we're gonna add we're gonna add an item and for let's just say an empty value is zero so let's just add zero to grid okay let's cre click the green flag and let's see what happens okay so now we have a grid with 660 items and it has well it, it's just filled with zeros that's good so now we have a completely empty grid let's hide these variables let's hide the variables like this okay so now what i want is actually i kind of want some walls like this so i just want the whole canvas to be bordered off so how do we do that well let's create a block for that let's create a new block called cre uh let's say set up a grid wall walls okay and run without screen refresh click okay set up grid walls okay let's stick this right underneath our setup grid so set up grid walls right there okay so inside setup grid walls how are we going to do this well we're going to first need to let's let's first consider the top the top row right the top row all we have to do is re replace these first items to be a uh, a, a, a one right okay so first of all to visualize this let's let's first find a way to visualize this because right now it's kind of not clear so before we set up the grid walls let's go ahead and inside our when green flag clicked let's create let's grab a forever loop and this is gonna be our render render let's render the grid so let's create a new block call it render grid okay run without screen refresh click OK and we're just going to stick this render grid inside our forever loop. Okay, so inside define render grid, what we're going to do is we're going to have to repeat through every single item again. So let's go to setup grid and let's just duplicate this repeat loop. So just from here, repeat, yeah. So duplicate that repeat loop, get rid of the add zero to grid, like this. Okay, so now we have this repeat loop. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to first go to the top corner of the screen so that's gonna be go to x uh 240 y oh no sorry x negative 240 y 180 okay and if we click the green flag as you can see it goes there and if we click it as you can see in the very top corner i don't know if you can see that uh there's a tiny dot that's blinking um yeah okay so okay now we have this repeat loop that will loop through every single item in our list so let's make it go do our list okay uh, let's go through every single item of our list and draw it. Okay, so what we're going to do is inside repeat world height, let's first go ahead and let's go ahead and change x by. And how much will we change it by? We're going to stick this underneath the repeat loop, by the way. Underneath the second repeat loop, like this. Change x by 10. Instead of 10, we need our size of our block, right? And lucky for us, that's already given to us. We have our grid size. So change x by grid size at the very end. And actually, no, this is going to be inside a repeat loop. Sorry about that. Uh, inside our second repeat loop, like this. Okay, we're going to change x by grid size. And then after that, we can duplicate this change x. We're, gonna, we're gonna actually going to change this to a change y by. We're going to change y by grid size, but this won't work because the changing y by a positive number will mean it goes up, right? So we need to actually multiply this by negative 1, um, multiply this by negative 1, so that it's a uh, negative value. So we're going to change y by grid size times negative 1. Okay, so as you can see, um, let's stick this underneath our second repeat loop. Okay change y by grid size minus negative um, times negative one and then what we're, 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 what we're, eh, what we're gonna want to do is now we're gonna set x back to 240 so go to motion drag a set x to negative 240. okay so right now nothing will happen because we are not drawing anything how do we okay so let's draw something to the screen so we're gonna need to go into now okay let's install the pen extension to install the pen extension we're gonna need to go into 
this um, add extension block, and then we're just going to select pen. Okay, and inside our forever loop, let's go ahead and erase all before the forever loop, like this. Okay, and inside render grid, what we're going to do is let's first of all set the pen color to, uh, let's just say, uh, gray. And set the pen color to that, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the pen size to grid size. Yeah, because, yeah, okay. Set the pen and stick this above our change x by grid size. So set pen size to grid size and then change x by. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and pen down, pen up. So underneath our set pen size to just pen down and then pen up. Okay, now we should be able to draw something to the screen. Let's see. Okay, so as you can see, we are drawing a grid of dots. Hold on, let me just. Let me just close the screen. Um, we are drawing a grid of dots to the screen. That's good, but I'm noticing that this is slightly off center. Now that's because we started at the, um, we started in the corner, uh, but pen doesn't work that way. Um, so what we're gonna do, what we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna have to change each of these numbers that we start off with. We're gonna have to change that a bit by I think 0.5. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to operators, we're going to drag it divided by, divided by 2, and goes back to variables, drag a grid size variable into there, and grid size divided by 2. Okay, what we're going to do is drag a uh, plus, and then do 240, uh, negative, negative 240, plus grid size divided by 2. And we're going to stick that right inside our go to x, like that. And then we are also going to have to do the same for the y, so we can duplicate that. And then what we're going to do is instead of negative 240, we're going to do positive 180, and then drag a minus instead of a plus, like this. So 180 minus grid size divided by 2. Now, let's see if that works. Okay, so as you can see, everything has been shifted down, but everything hasn't been shifted to the left yet. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so duplicate the X condition one more time, and then what we're going to do is we're going to stick this inside our set X240 at the bottom here. Okay, so now it's perfectly aligned to the grid, which is good. Okay, so instead of immediately pen down... Okay, let's, let's try and render if it's actually a tile or not. So we're going to... So, what, so we're going to go and inside our list, we're just going to check, inside our grid list, we're just going to check if this value is not a 0. If it's not a 0, what we're going to do is draw it. If, it's a, if it is a 0, we're not going to draw it. Um, that doesn't make sense right now. It will in a second. Okay, so we're going to, let's go to control, drag an if, and let's surround the pen down, pen up in an if condition and stick the pen, change pen, pen, change x by grid size back at the bottom. Okay, if... And what are what is our condition? We need a we need a not, and we need an equal. So not something equals fifty, and we're not going to put fifty here. We're going to actually put zero in here. Okay, and we're also going to go ahead and go to list, drag an item one of grid. So this is going to be if not item one of grid equals zero. Okay, so if not item one of grid equals zero, that means if item 1 of the grid is not 0, then we're going to pen down, pen up. But, okay, so now we need to check every single item of the grid list. How do we, how do we index our grid? That means, like, how do we go through our grid and make, keep track of which I index we are looking at? Well, this is actually pretty simple. We're going to go to variables. We're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it i. Um, i is basically the default variable for, like, counting. And I'm just going to set it for for the sprite only, because why not? Um, okay. So, okay, so I'm going to, at the very beginning here, I'm going to set i. I'm going to set i to 1. And then at the very bottom here, I'm going to change the i variable by 1. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and stick i into this item of grid here. So now, this is going to be, if not item i of grid equals 0, then pin down, pin up. That means, go through every single item of the grid list, check if it's a 0 or not, if it's not a 0, if it's something other than a 0, then draw the pixel. Okay, so right now, uh, it should go back to a blank screen, nothing should be happening. Okay, but, but, let me show you something, okay. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually replace, let's go ahead and grab this replace item one of grid with thing. It doesn't really matter what you put in here, I'm just gonna leave it as thing. And you can replace pretty much any item you want. I'm gonna replace item 330 because that's the center. You can replace item one, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and I'm gonna click this. Okay, bam, we have a dot drawn to the screen because th item 330 is not zero anymore. So this is how we're gonna check which item we're gonna this is gonna be how we check each item uh okay this is gonna be how we render our grid okay great now let's just check the time on this we have 20 okay Ooh, already okay let's set up the grid walls before we end this video so define set up grid walls how are we gonna do this well what we're gonna do is we're gonna first check we're gonna first let's start simple we're gonna replace we're gonna first um we're, we're gonna fill the top row with squares. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat. So repeat, and how many times are we gonna repeat? Well, we're gonna repeat world width times. And we're just gonna set, we're just gonna go ahead and let's just use reuse the i variable. So we're gonna go ahead and at the very beginning, set i to one. And then inside the repeat loop, we're gonna change i by one. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to go ahead and drag a replace item one of grid with thing. Now, inside our repeat world width, what we're gonna do is above our change i, we're gonna stick our replace item one, and inside instead of replace item one of grid, we're gonna replace item i of grid with um uh one because for in my example, one is gonna be the stone tile. Okay, so uh, let's let's um let's test this out. Great. Okay, so now we have a a uh, grid of yeah we have a list of items at the top. Now this is actually pretty easy to replicate on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we we can just duplicate this repeat loop. We're gonna set i to and all we have to do is change this number somehow. Uh, let's hide the grid variable actually uh, grid list for, for a second. Okay, we're just gonna set i to uh, the length of the grid, which means 660 in this case, because that's how many items in the grid we're gonna have. We're gonna re we're gonna set i to length of grid minus minus um, our world width, because that's gonna start it, uh, I think, in this bottom corner, and then go across like that. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Okay, so let's stick this inside our set i to 1, right here. Um, and let's drag this underneath our uh, our other repeat loop. Let's set, test this out. That is not exactly what I wanted. Um, it is looping... Okay. Okay, I know how to fix this problem. This is actually a pretty simple problem to fix. We're just gonna go ahead and drag an operator. Just add 1 to this number here. Like that. And down. Okay. So now we have the top and bottom. Let's do the left and right. Now the left and right is a bit more tricky than the top and bottom. Now it's not anything too difficult though. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate this top repeat loop. Get rid of the bottom repeat loop from here. Uh, and then what we're going to do is stick this. Um, let's just leave this here. Okay. So what we're going to do is say, let's just replace item, replace, okay, let's just rewrite the script so it suits our needs better uh, for top and, uh, for the left and right edges. Okay, so set i to 1, that's fine. Repeat world width. Instead of world width, we're going to change this to world height. And replace item i of grid with 1, that's fine. Okay, change i by 1. We don't want to change i by 1 anymore. We're going to, we need to go down an item. Now, that's just just take my word for it, that's just going to be world width. So change i by world width. Now that should work, let's see, let's stick that under there. And, yes, okay, there. So, now we have the left edge. And let's finally do the right edge. So what we're going to do is we can just duplicate this one more time. And we're going to start from, and we're going to set i to, all we're going to change is we're going to change this first set i to, we're going to set i to, I think, world width. That should work. 
and just stick that under there, and yes. Okay, so now we have a border around our screen. Okay, so unfortunately I am out of time, so I'm going to have to leave it from here, but, I, um, but we are going to continue with this series very soon. I hope the next video can be uploaded tomorrow, but anyway. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video, and keep to to stay tuned for part two. Make sure to hit that notification bell, and as a subscription would be highly appreciated. Um, thank you for watching. See you at how to how to do stuff and see you next time.